DevOps is like a factory, but for software. Each part of the factory is a tool you should learn. And more importantly, now you will understand why you should learn it. Every time we hear about DevOps and all these tools, it's very easy to get confused. Why do we need to learn all of them? Why some of them seem to do the same thing? Is it enough if I just learn two or three? Well, this video is going to clarify everything for you. We are going to mention the essential DevOps tools. There are many more out there, but this will give you the baseline that you need. My name is Diego, I'm a network and systems engineer based in Paris, and I like breaking down tech concepts into simple and visual explanations. If you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. And that's all, back to the video. The first tool in the process is usually a task tracker like Jira. This might be surprising for some of you, but Jira actually triggers the whole DevOps process. It is a ticketing system that allows engineering teams organize their projects and tasks. I recommend learning methods like Scrum, understand how sprints work, also get some familiarity with the tool, because even if you are not a project manager, you need to know how to manage your Jira tickets, how to set your priorities and manage your time. Okay, now let's say we have a Jira ticket to work on. So we move on to the next step. The next tool in the process is Git. Git is the tool that allows you to track changes of your code and save checkpoints along the way. You will combine it with platforms like GitHub or GitLab, to collaborate with your team. You need to learn the basic commands such as git pull, git push, git merge, git branch. I have a full video explaining git and github if you want to check it out. Whenever you push your code to GitLab using git, you will trigger something called a pipeline. That is our next step. Most known as CICD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. This is where the code stops being just text in a repository and it starts becoming software that we can actually run. As you can see, the first step inside CICD is build, basically preparing your code into a package that computers can run. Then we test it. If all the checks pass, we create a release. But don't get confused. Release is not the same as deploy. A release means giving the application a version number, like 1.4.2 and making it available, ready to be deployed. I recommend learning how to build these pipelines. For this example, I use GitLab CICD to illustrate, but there are other tools that do the same, like GitHub Actions or Jenkins. The result of the CICD process is a new version of your application, very well packed with everything that it needs inside, also known as a container. Here we are talking about our next tool, Docker. And let's clarify something here. You can build a container manually, without a CI-CD pipeline. So it is a good idea to learn how to build a container from scratch, so that when you need to automate this with CI-CD, it's going to be way easier for you. I have also a full video explaining Docker if you want to check it out. Next tool, Kubernetes. At this point, we already have our application very well packed, but it is still not running. We can say that it's ready to be deployed, and we deploy it using Kubernetes. Kubernetes is the orchestration tool that has access to our servers. That group of servers is called a cluster. The orchestrator is always analyzing the cluster, and based on the information it has, it will choose the best place to deploy your container. That's why we call it an orchestrator. It's the one making the decisions. Once your container is deployed, your app is finally running. But I have an important question. What if we run out of capacity on our servers? All of them are full of apps already running. That means that we need to add more servers. That's where Terraform comes in. Terraform is used to define your infrastructure as code. Basically, you define your desired infrastructure in Terraform files, and Terraform will be in charge of creating those servers for you. Let's say we created 200 servers using Terraform. Everything is working fine, but suddenly we need to implement a security policy on all of those servers. Doing just one is fine, we can do it manually, but doing those 200, that sounds like a pain. That's why we have our next tool, Ansible. Ansible allows you to automate changes across all your infrastructure. It doesn't matter if there are just five servers or 3,000. You code it once and Ansible will connect to each server and implement those changes. I have also a full video explaining Ansible and how it works, so you can check it out. It is very important to don't confuse Ansible and Terraform. With Terraform, you create or remove those servers. With Ansible, you configure them. Next tool. Prometheus. Prometheus is also a tool that is connected to all our existing servers, but with a different purpose. Prometheus is collecting all their status metrics. Metrics like CPU usage, RAM, network traffic, or even specific metrics from the applications, like how many users are currently connected. Then it stores those metrics in a database. That brings us to our last tool. Grafana. We use Grafana to visualize those metrics. Once the metrics are in a database, we can connect it to Grafana, and we create graphs using those metrics. 
like curves or histograms, any type of graph that you can imagine. Then we place those graphs in a dashboard in order to monitor the health of our whole platform. This is super important because it allows us to know if everything is running well. But let's say we detect that something is not working well. Guess what? We create a Jira ticket to correct it and the process repeats. Once you understand the purpose of each of these tools and why you need to learn them, everything just clicks. You see the logic of it, the logic of the DevOps factory. I will be explaining deeply each of these tools and giving advice on how you can learn them faster. So feel free to subscribe. If this video helped you to understand the essential DevOps tools better, give me some feedback in the comments. I will appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.